Okay, so our next assignment is talking about congenital kyphosis and all the challenges of managing that. Um, and we've all based congenital kyphosis on uh, Winter's classification from 1973, uh, failure of formation, failure of segmentation, and then most of these actually are mixed if you really look at them. And then there's two other kind of categories, one described by Dubesay, congenital dislocation of the spine, which also can present as, as a kyphotic deformity, and then gibbous deformities, common in myelomeningocele and other things. And so, the re, you know, what are the real challenges in managing these kids? Um, the first one is the age and timing of surgery. Often we see severe deformities in really young kids, and our instrumentation is kind of big, so how do you figure that out? Um, what type of preoperative planning do you do? Do you use 3D models as you're planning your surgical uh, approach? Uh, understanding what the neurologic risk is in these kids, because many of them, you're pushed to do surgery when they actually are showing signs of neurologic uh, issues. Do you go short? Do you go long? Do you do VCRs? Or do you use growth-friendly options? And I think some of the cases we're going to go through are going to address a lot of those. And here's one example, a four-year-old that I've been following. Um, she uh, was doing really well. She has this large... Uh, uh, really a, a mixed type congenital kyphosis. Um, and she was doing pretty well, but she was very small. She had a twin, and then all of a sudden she started having shaky legs and some back pain, and she went from being uh, um, potty trained to having accidents. And this was her MRI, and this was her 3D CT scan. So then the question becomes, what would you do at that point? Anyone? Yeah, so anybody else? Yeah, I think Amr made the point earlier, shortening the spine sometimes in the face of neurologic deficits is, a, is, a, is, is not the aggressive thing, but the, the appropriate thing to do. So. And, and actually, you know, on that MRI scan, but again, I saw it quite too much, so it looks like the cord is actually feathered. So. Okay. okay, so just as the teaser case, we did a, a resection of the hemi and a short fusion and she's, her neurologic symptoms went away. Not perfect, but good for discussion. So next is gonna be Lindsay. We'll get out of this. Any comments? Did you see the other Uh You mean like a cage? Yeah. No, we didn't. John? Okay. Did you her? No, but we shortened her. Anyone else? Uh, sorry. Okay, that's there. No, it's not there. Mike, Does, is that what you wanted? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'll just make the comment that um, uh, I'm concerned because the amount of DJK below your LIV, and any time you leave the LIV, <coughs> basically the DJK, you know, kyphosis below your LIV, even in AIS, I think you need to start talking to parents about uh, how when you have limited goals and reports you're going to take them back, and you know, it could be, a, it might last a long time. Yeah, she's actually a couple years out now, and her fusion's solid, and she's running around, and the only issue with her is her upper screws are a little prominent subcutaneously, but yeah, I think these are all issues. Do you have a recent x-ray? This is the recent one. I'm sorry, you can't see the fusion as well. It's like solid. Yeah. 
bone in the back. Why did you choose two screws above and two below? I mean, if it's such a small kit and one screw would probably clean it up. Well, I, you know, um, I just felt like I needed more fixation, right or wrong. And, but she's a kid, too. I mean, I could have break. I, I think you need at least, for me, I would need to replace her. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you could save a level with a third rod, too, just have another point of fixation, either depending on what the level of where you're doing the resection is, either a third rod on the ribs or a third rod on the lamina. Um, to uh, give you a little bit more reinforcement. But you do have to be a little careful in the really small ones because you want to make sure that you still have enough bone there for fusion. Um. Or you can back up the screw with the sublaminar wire or something. You know, just so because the candle, it's going to be a cantilever coil with that screw. But you can do it as a loopy wire. How about a quick show of hands? Two above and two below versus um, uh, shorter than that. So two above and two below. All right. Who, all right, who wants to go shorter? All right, there you go. Great. <laughs>